2016 is coming to a close and things are coming together here in the wacky world of Multimedia J. If you prefer certain series over others, understand that the idea of a side series is going away in 2017 and the series will be closer together than ever before, along with a few other reforms. Thank you for your support. Multimedia J Radio Style. That's a little bit of Silent Night from E's Jammy Jams from the YouTube Audio Library. The instrumental version with the saxophone. There is also a full vocal version out there that kind of sort of reminds me of an old Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald song. But I was so tempted to use that for this discussion. However, I don't really want to be talking over someone else's singing. It makes things just a little bit awkward. So go dig around the YouTube audio library. Matter of fact, you can dig around for all kinds of stuff that I use. If you want to download the music tracks and listen to them as music, you know, the stuff that I use in, in these videos on here, usually it's from Silent Partner or Jingle Punks or the metal is Ethan Mikesell nearly all the time. So if you have a YouTube account, if you can post a comment, you have a YouTube account, even if you don't use it. But go over to the YouTube audio library and do some uh, listening. All the tracks have play buttons so you can listen to them before downloading them. But if you like the music, definitely check it out. And if you can comment, hey, what is this song? Then you have an account and you can actually go looking for these tracks yourself. There's nothing stopping you from downloading them as MP3s and listening to them either. Even though you're not going to use them in a video, you can still download them to listen to them because there's some pretty good stuff going on to the YouTube audio library these days. All right. Well, as you can probably guess from the Christmas theme of all of this, you're listening to Multimedia J Radio Style for Saturday, December 24th, 2016, Christmas Eve 2016. The holiday humbug season is almost over, and I have a lot to do today after I record this. I'm going to go on a marathon over on Daily Motion and upload all the Christmas-related 2006 videos that I want converted into classics over on Daily Motion, so there will probably be more activity over on Daily Motion than there is on YouTube today. But hey, what can I say? I set goals and I want to achieve said goals and uh, it, you know, by whatever means necessary. So I have PowerPoint refrigerator magnets from 2006, the Christmas tree videos, the video about Scrooge movies, all kinds of stuff. I don't know how many folks, if anybody, is still watching and listening from 2006 when I started, but the Daily Motion classics are taking on a uh, are taking on a coolness all of their own a concentrated coolness as it were so daily motion definitely more in play than ever before and of course if you follow me on twitter you'll find out about those uploads too because twitter serves as a combined feed at multimedia j a y now let's talk christmas last year i did a vlog about this which looking back on it now and quite literally trying to watch it this morning was pretty awkward <laughs> Very awkward, very rambly, and I think I could get way more to the point. And it'd be good if I discussed this this year with the possibility of getting rid of the vlogs next year because the vlogs don't really have any real place in a post-side series world. Can't really figure out what to do with them, and one of the things that's on the table is to get rid of the vlogs entirely. But we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it. In the meantime, vlogs are accompanying something else because the vlogs must decrease and the rest of the content must increase. If I want to do a vlog, I want to pair it up with something else from one of the other series. So that will be what I do for the time being. I mean, vlogs aren't even going to be mentioned in the upcoming channel intro for beyond 10 years. That's what I think of them. Plus, you know, the whole thing with main series, side series did not work anywhere near as well as, well, actually, it didn't work any better than anybody else who's tried doing this. I have yet to see anybody who distinguishes which is main and side series ever have ever avoid the same problems that I had. But enough of the administrative talk. Let's talk about Christmas. Perhaps to go along with the amped up emotions left over from the political season in the U.S. this year, the themes, the usual themes for Christmas that I've run into are substantially more amped up than usual. And, uh, yeah, especially at the 9 to 5, around the office I ran into more folks who were basically trying to turn Christmas into something compulsory. And let me tell you something, 
compulsory holidays miss the point. I thought these things were supposed to be fun. I kind of ruffled some feathers, but with the crap I've put up with this year, I wasn't exactly that quick to get all caught up in some kind of ha-ha humbug holiday something or another at the 9 to 5. So I'm sure I ruffled some feathers, but it's better than being a blubber-spined bozo that doesn't actually have a backbone about things. But quite frankly, they can always do better next year, and I'll feel more like getting involved with their celebration if they do so. But... The thing is, compulsory holidays miss the point, and this doesn't just apply to those those office Santas who bother the heck out of you. Why don't you seem to be getting into the holiday spirit? Where's your Santa hat? What's your problem, Scrooge? <laughs> this actually applies to other themes as well, some of which are Scrooge-related. But anyways, while we're talking about ruffling feathers, I'm sure I ruffled some feathers on Twitter, too. Sorry, Santa nuts, I observe the real Christmas tide. You can keep your greed and fruitcake. And then I posted... Eis ist ein Rotschitz Sprungen, the German version of the Christmas hymn, Lo, how a rose ever blooming. That's ever blooming. It's one of those, like, oh, your type ways of saying things. But uh, there is another one, but it's very, very relaxing, almost like relaxed tracks. You could fall asleep to it. So I posted the original German with the choir in the church and whatnot. Uh, there is an English translation to that hymn out there, but yeah, I'm sure <laughs> Santa nuts. I'm saving that one for later. Saw people at Wits End and Walmart yesterday caught up in this mess. Some holiday, huh? I thought these things were supposed to be fun. And indeed, those are legitimate criticisms. Myself and my dad have long been fans of Scrooge movies, and I have a lot of them on DVD. None of them are widescreen, though. I wonder if there'll ever be a widescreen Scrooge movie out there. Maybe I should go poke around on Amazon or something. Heck, I don't even watch two... I don't even watch the ones that I have enough as it is, so why do I want to get more of them? But either, anyways, uh, I can I can relate to folks that don't necessarily default to getting caught up in the holiday hysteria much like Mr. Scrooge did, except I'm not going to need three ghosts to change my mind or anything. The problem I have with Christmas is its status as a dual holiday. There's people out there that think that Christmas is a religious holiday, and those people are wrong. There is very much a secular version of Christmas that happens at exactly the same time. And if we actually compare the religious Christmas with the pop culture Christmas, you'll start finding some very notable differences very, very quickly. Like, for example, in the liturgical calendar of the church... Christmas starts at the begins with Christmas Day and goes on for 12 days. Prior to that is the season of Advent. Now, basically what that means is if folks follow the 12 days of Christmas that the song gets its name from, they start with the Christmas stuff on December 25th. Now, what happens in the stores with the holiday humbug season and Santa and you better have been good this year and you better get me what you want? It's dying down before the 25th. This, you know, when it's too late to have something arrive by Christmas, everything dies in the e-tailing world, as it did with where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Everything just plummeted to what it was yesterday. And in the retail, we'll see after the last minute shoppers, that's it. Everything just shoom, like that. Except for a little bit of returns from people returning all that stuff they didn't want after Christmas. That's basically, you know, basically the whole Christmas thing in the pop culture is winding down around the time that the religious observance of Christmas is just getting started. And then when you see somebody who still has their tree up on January 3rd, who may still be playing Christmas hymns, may still be wishing you a Merry Christmas, and may still everything in January before the, the Feast of the Epiphany, that that gets awkward very, very quickly. <laughs> and you know what? The reverse is true as well. It really is a pain in the neck to still be, hey, I want to still celebrate Christmas tide when everybody else around you is taking down their tree, rung in the new year, and they're running around singing Auld Lang Syne instead of a great and mighty wonder or something along those lines. So, no, I mean, these, these, these two, this dual holiday, the only common ground it really has is December the 25th. And that's interesting, considering the history of Christmas, that it was really formalized by Constantine the Great. The early church was more into Easter than Christmas. But to see, and even in the United States, in the early days of this republic, Christmas celebrations were banned in certain parts of the country because they were deemed too Catholic. Well, that's too, that's, that's the Pope's mumbo-jumbo. We're not like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Bad Christmas, bad. But then... 
Actually, interestingly enough, we talk about the Scrooge story. It was Charles Dickens in A Christmas Carol that kind of sort of floated the idea of a secular Christmas about charity and stuff like that. Then the Dutch brought over the Sinterklaas tradition, which was the forerunner to Santa Claus. And, well, next thing we know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all this other stuff that we're just in, just delu deluged? Flooded with, that's better, as, as kids and growing up and it's just... It's just yeah, it's cute, the little claymation cartoons and the Charlie Brown cartoons, that's nice and all, but we all know that Christmas, the way our culture handles it, is not, is not just a couple of specials on TV. It is more than enough to get someone like me saying bah humbug and excusing myself from the whole shebang to turn it exclusively into a religious observance. And that's basically it. I mean, who wouldn't when you compare these two? On the one hand, you have the gospel. Jesus, born in the manger, God wrapping himself in our humanity for us to live the life for us, die on the cross for us, be raised from the dead for us. It's all stuff for us. There's no demands or finger pointing or screaming and hollering about you'd better do this, you'd better do that. You know, it's actually, you know, something that's enjoyable when you hear the news. Like, oh, yeah, okay, this guy who was God did this stuff for me. And I don't have to do anything? Well, I'll be damned. Actually, that's I'm, I'm kind of resurrecting a Rod Rosenblatt joke here, but you know, let's just note this. Jesus did this. God did that. Angels sang this. Blah. What don't you hear in that narrative? You don't hear, you'd better do this. You'd better do that. No, my friends, if you want to hear that sort of thing, look at what the culture does to Christmas. Look at what has happened to this to the Dutch Sinterklaas tradition, especially when you compare Santa Claus with Saint Nicholas. We took a bishop who, as word would have it, would tend would have this thing around this time of the year for throwing sacks of gold coins through poor people's windows. Hey, here you go. Here you go, poor folks. Have a little money. Have some fun this holiday season. You know, actual charity. Somehow we took that act of charity and we perverted it into this creepy old pervert at the North Pole who sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake and he knows if you've been bad or good. <laughs> Mucho apologies if I'm ruining people's child childhoods here, but what we've done with Santa Claus is absurd. And you know what? In terms of people manipulating other people, that seems to be such a theme with this garbage that goes on around Christmas these days. Let's take parent-child, for example, that relationship in both directions. You get kids who think that, oh, I behaved myself this year. Does that mean I get whatever I want from Santa? And then the parents are put on the spot. So it's manipulation and people messing with each other. And then the reverse is true. Santa's watching you. You'd better behave yourself or you're not going to get anything for Christmas. So the manipulation goes in both directions. And I wish this were just some goofy little thing that happens as kids are growing up. But it isn't. It keeps right on going into adulthood. Even if you get rid of the whole Santa Claus thing and you don't bother with, like, your secret Santa at the office or anything like that, it, even if even as this goes on, you know, even into adulthood, some of this manipulating others thing sticks around. Oh, you didn't get me what I wanted for Christmas? Well, I'm not talking to you all next year because you're a pathetic excuse for an in-law or relative or whatever. Yeah, I've seen some of that. Mostly, uh, my step family used to do that a lot. There'd be people that would be persona non grata for an entire year because they didn't get everything everybody that so and so wanted for Christmas, and then. Get this, after years of folks bankrupting themselves with all this stuff they couldn't afford, be, oh, it's Christmas, I gotta buy everybody something. Now suddenly I hear these talks about folks, all everyone getting together and cutting a deal. We're only gonna buy for this person or that person. Everybody else is gonna get a card or a gift certificate or a gift card. Look, look we've taken a holiday that's about something done for us and perverted the living heck out of it into this drudgery. No wonder people are skeptical of Christmas. This is, and there's people like me that are cynical of the whole deal. Look at this. It's supposed to be a holiday, supposed to be fun, and yet we have to cut deals to not go broke in the beginning of a brand new year because of this holiday. That shows just how far this train has sailed off the tracks. No thank you. Please, by all means, count me out. Make me the black sheep of the family. Call me a Scrooge. 
<laughs> so, you know, I'll just go to a service on Christmas Day, including if it's a Sunday. Yeah, that's another discussion entirely. Because believe me, I've heard the preachy folks like, keep Christ in Christmas, say Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays. And then the 25th rolls around and it happens to be on a Sunday. Well, we're all going to stay home instead of coming to church on Sunday. So y'all can spend time with your families. Okay. Another discussion entirely, but a very relevant one. But let's stick with the dual holiday for this discussion. If folks are interested, we can talk about some of that, particularly if there's folks from the Bible Belt in those parts of the country that are sick and tired of people trying to drag them into some service somewhere. I know a few things about that. I had it happen to me once before, and I was pretty disgusted with it. You know, I didn't actually get involved in any church anything until I actually wanted to. What a surprise. In any event, people wonder why I have no problem with saying happy holidays. And, well, here's the thing. There are plenty of holidays around this time of the year and all kinds of traditions and practices out there. Not just religious. There's also Festivus for the rest of us. Good luck body slamming the head of household. Those of you actually messing around with that stuff. But uh, I think that's how we're, it doesn't end until the head of household's head touches the floor or something like that. <laughs> So it's a, uh, um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of traditions around this time of the year. And, uh, you know, when I say happy holidays, I'm also referring to both Christmases that fall on the same day. So yeah, there is an overtone and a worldview aspect to me taking the side of Scrooge and being cynical of the commercialism, because you consider a holiday that was about good news that somebody did something for you turning into, you'd better do this for me or else. It just drives people like me up the wall to see just what happened with this sort of thing. And it's not just Christmas either. You know, all the holidays are slowly becoming like this. Who's going over whose house on Easter? Did the kids get enough stuff from the Easter bunny in their basket? You know, what's, where are we going on Thanksgiving? Who's getting up at the crack of dawn on a day off from work to start the turkey or whatever? You know, it's like holidays are just going away. They're becoming not so much holiday. I'm starting to think that maybe we should just all abstain from every holiday out there for a year and just take the day off from work, sleep in, Turn the alarm clock off and just do whatever you want on those days. And I'll bet any money it'd be better for the psyche of this amped up nation. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sad. I know Christmas is not the only victim of this nonsense and there will be more because people can be pretty selfish. And what they've done to Christmas is just a template for what can happen. Any oh, yeah, let's use this as an excuse to manipulate others and doing what we want. Because we as people can't get away from that now, can we? Charity be darned, darn it. Blech. And there are people out there that actually complain because, oh, look, suddenly everybody's charitable around Christmas time. Good. Thank you. They're charitable at least at this time of year. I'm sure that the even the even the token charity around the holidays is better than what the average family demanding everybody get everybody everything they want for Christmas that no, I, I'll take some I'll take some token charity at the end of the year over that. Thank you very much. I'd much rather see people you know, being charitable around this time of the year than pestering the living daylights out of their friends, relatives, whatever. You better get this for me. You better get that for me. Stop. Just stop. Enjoy the holiday. That's what it's there for. Somehow we've gotten away from that. And that is a bad, bad thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in saying it loud, saying it proud, when it comes to the nonsense that Christmas has been perverted into, and I better turn away from the microphone for this or it'll distort like crazy, BAH HUMBUG! <laughs> Folks, enjoy yourself this holiday season. Kick back, relax, and actually have some fun. Don't let yourself get sucked into this crap that's floating around out there because there's plenty of it to be had and it is <laughs> i thought holidays were supposed to be fun let's get back to that please thanks for listening everybody till next time this is multimedia j signing off thanks for stopping by we will conclude this segment with the jazz version of silent night with the vocals from ease jammy jams from the YouTube audio library, little over three minutes, but Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.